afternoon. Thanks, TEDx, for having us here. We're very happy that we can uh, share our idea with you, and we hope you will get inspired by it. Um, we will speak the next few minutes about the numerous possibilities there are for female entrepreneurs to have their company growing ambitiously, growing very fast if they want to. Um, but first, let me start with a short introduction. Hella already introduced Kamen and Capital, so I will skip that. Um, my partner on stage is Cilia Jans van Planck, and we have a third partner, Hardewijk Sels, who is somewhere in the audience uh, over there. <laughs> Myself, I'm uh, Desiree van Boxel, and indeed, we have a background in financial services and corporate banking and investing, but also in entrepreneurship. We have been, and we are, still are, entrepreneurs ourselves. So. First, um, I'd like to provide you a little background on finance, just to sort of uh, make you able to comprehend what we would like to talk about this afternoon. If you want to buy a company or you want to grow a company, you need money, usually. Um, there are two sources to get that money. That's internal, that's if the company makes profits itself, you have cash flows, or you get it externally. Now, you can do that via loans, go to your friends, family, banks, or you try to get share capital, equity. And you can do that via friends and family who can also take shares in your company, or you go to private equity providers like us. Or you go, if you are a mature company, to the stock exchange and get it in the public markets. So this is a simple um, talk about how you can get the financing. Um, before we go on, we would like to show you a very small commercial about what we feel is very much the old thinking. Hello, I'd like to order a french fries, a burger and a milkshake. This is a library. <laughs> I'd like to order French fries, <laughs> a burger, and a milkshake. Okay. Ouch. That hurt. But fortunately, um, there is no reason for any female entrepreneur, or any women for that matter, to feel addressed by these kinds of old-fashioned biases, of course. Um, I'll, I want to share some facts with you. Um, in the US, 70% of all new businesses are now started by women. In the Netherlands, that's over 30%. Um, in the Netherlands, approximately 15% of um, all small and mid-sized companies is now owned by women or run by a gender-diverse management team. On the other hand, I must say, um, if you look at the private equity industry, so the, the companies that are financed with private equity money, less than 1% is actually a, com a company that's led by a woman. By a woman. And in the US, um, only 4% of all female business owners have raised private equity as a means of financing their company, first 11% of their male counterparts, so there is still a large gap. Nevertheless, there is good news, because once female entrepreneurs do start raising money and do start, they want to grow um, fast with their companies, they normally are very successful. So when they grow, women-owned businesses are now growing twice the rate of their male counterparts in the US, 17 versus 9%, which is absolutely very great. Gender-diverse managed companies, it was said already by Jeanette Fasse today, um, consistently generate higher financial returns. A profit-related uh, norm, the EBIT, is over 45% higher in gender-diverse managed companies than average. And business started by women, live longer, two years from startup, still 80% um, is alive versus 50% on average. So that's good news, we think. Okay. That was a bad sheet with lots of numbers. Um, why women often do not think of ownership, we are going to talk about uh, today. Owning, owing, owing an own company, at first instance, they don't think about it. And if they do think about it, we uh, experience that they don't think about um, uh, growth, or if they do think about growth, how are you going to do such a thing? We would like to share some examples which we experienced throughout our practice uh, of women we met, very powerful women who owned a company. The first company we met as a division, as a CEO of a dis uh, division, she was leading this company for over eight years, and the management board of this company decided to sell the company. She did not agree with that, 
um, but she did not think of the fact that she could actually buy the company. No, what did she do? She went searching for a new job. So the possibility of a management buyout was not on top of mind. A second example. We met a CEO of a Dutch uh, company who had the opportunity in this case to buy the company, but she said to us, I cannot afford it, I don't have 20 million at the bank. Unaware of all financial possibilities, opportunities there are. Um, and there are so many opportunities. A third example to prove our point here. We met with a founder of a, a company who had a really good growth strategy. She went to the bank to get financing for this growth strategy and the bank declined it. We had a good look at it and we found so many other ways in financing this growth because she abandoned the strategy and she shouldn't have. So she was able to pick up equity with other partners or even go to two, three, four other banks to try to convince them. So we call this the disconnect. The disconnect between women and entrepreneurship and we feel it should be closed. Now, we think this is a problem. Maybe you don't, but I will convince you, you also see it as a problem. Why? It has to do that if you don't close this, um, why should you um, destruct all the investments which are made in women education? We want to reduce that by, by stimulating people to go and, and go and build your company. There are economic reasons to be an entrepreneur. You create jobs, but also very important, we have demographical reasons. Um, the working force is getting older and older here in the Netherlands. So we need more women to enter this market. And the third is individual, individual wealth creation. And last but not least, for us it will create good opportunities because companies led by women and by men make so much better returns. Now we would like to show you a small commercial as well, which in our view represents the new thinking. So that's the good news. <laughs> well, we have some ideas on how the disconnect can be closed and we would like to inspire you with these ideas. Um, if you have a company or if you want your company to grow very fast, don't sell yourself, yourself short. Uh, we've noticed time and time again that uh, women do not want to overpromise. They don't want to tell more than there is maybe. But whatever you do, at least don't be modest. It will definitely work against you in the financial services world. The next one is to network effectively. We know it's very, it can be very intimidating to go out to networking events, and sometimes it's much, much better to sit at home one night and maybe have, have dinner with your kids than go out and have a drink with the guys, of course. But still, network effectively. Find the, the right people to speak with, find the right parties to speak with, maybe do it on one-on-one -on -one basis, but do it. And finally, find the money, it's there. For every good business case, there will be funding. It will be arranged. So, then, we would like to show you this. If you're not inspired yet, maybe you get inspired by these 35 companies that are all women-led, and this is only the top of the iceberg. There are 10 to 15,000 of these companies in the Netherlands only, and internationally many more, of course. Um, we would like to create new role models and we, we hope we can inspire you to become a new role model. If you are ambitious, please try to be here on one of the question marks. Thank you very much. Thank you.